Happy birthday! Welcome back to Life in Fork. I've been thinking of how to make this video for the last month or so. I, it's been one year, so it's uh, my channel's birthday. Life in Fork celebrated one year in March. And I want to do a video to show how it has been and how easy it is to do one and again, how hard it is. So I think it's crucial to start a year ago and explain why I made a channel. Uh, honestly, I didn't want to do YouTube. I didn't want to be online. I didn't. I didn't care for it. I didn't care for doing videos and stuff like that. Uh, I've been a chef since I was a little kid. I've been put in the kitchen when I was 11 years old, and then I became a sous chef right out of college, and then an executive chef when I turned 30. So throughout the years, I've just been creative in that way. I love being creative and showing art through food. So I ended up doing a trip out to Scotland maybe a year and a half ago in December. I went out there to visit my two friends, Paul and Gina. Uh, Paul has his own channel, uh, Rum Barber. I'll put a link up above and below so you guys can go check him out. So when I was out there, you know, me and Paul ended up, you know, going around town. He was showing me everything and showing me what Scotland had to offer. And we just got, did a lot of, you know, soul searching and talking and stuff like that. He's the one that came up with the idea for creating the channel. And I didn't want to. I still didn't want to. So I came back home and uh, went through the motions, going back to work and everything, and he kept on hitting me up and asking, you know, when are you gonna start it? So finally, I gave in and I purchased my first piece of equipment, which was the DJI uh, gimbal for the iPhone. So I went to work one day and asked the cooks to video me making guacamole. So the goal was to make guacamole in five minutes. So when I originally created my channel, it wasn't Life and Fork, it was Quick Clean Eats. I wanted to show how to eat clean, which uh, ran with the fitness that, you know, I like working out and all that. So I wanted to do something in the sense of that. So I started going down that path. In the first video, I mean, as anyone who's created videos, it sucked. I mean, the audio was bad, the, the video was bad, everything was bad, but I was starting off and I was learning and then I needed to learn how to edit. So I, I got Final Cut Pro on my Mac and started going to town and learning little things here and there. As I went on, I started adding new equipment I uh, bought a Canon 80D, I got the Rode uh, Video Mic Pro Plus, I got a uh, Rode uh, Lavalier, uh, Lavalier mic, and then the last piece of equipment, I bought some LED lights. So uh, the investment was huge off the bat. I think I put in a couple thousand dollars just in equipment and everything like that, and there was no growth from the channel. The only people who followed me at the start were my friends and colleagues. So it was a challenge to figure out what to do. So over the course of a year, the channel changed a lot. It became Life and Fork, and then I started doing more vlogs and showing workouts and everything. I was going all over the place. And at first, it seemed like everyone liked it. I started doing donut reviews, uh, restaurant reviews, showing how to grocery shop. And, but the growth wasn't growing, and it just wasn't going the way it was. So then I returned back to just doing food and recipes and then I started noticing the growth and then the views were going up, the clicks and everything as, as we all call them. So then I went back to just cooking. So at one point I was doing three videos a day, now I'm only doing one video a week. No, three videos a week, sorry. Now I'm only doing one video a week. So, uh, so I started at zero, now I'm at 199. As, as you can tell, I'm at I think 123 videos when this one drops and growth isn't that easy. I mean, it's hard to get the attention of people. I get a lot of views and stuff like that, but not a lot of clicks, not a lot of subscribers. Not, it doesn't translate. My Instagram at Chef Jesse Q has almost 6,000 followers. My Facebook, same, you know, Chef Jesse Q has 4,000 followers, et cetera, et cetera, but it doesn't translate. So it's not as easy as you would think. But I never thought anything that I did in life would be easy. So that wasn't why I got into the whole YouTube thing. What I got into it was honestly to find my voice. I grew up and like I said, kitchens through since a little kid and everything. And uh, one thing you learn about is all the personalities. You meet a lot of people and everything like that. So I got caught like anyone else right out of high school, going to college, trying to figure out who you are and knowing how to express yourself. So. I think in general, 
But one thing I take away from this whole year is that YouTube helped me find my voice, uh, lock in on who I am, really focus on the creative part, you know, and and trying to show emotion and everything. And it's hard. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's times I turn the mic on and the camera and, and you get lost. You become not who you really are. You're not letting go and being free. So there's always, you know, good videos and bad videos. But most importantly, out of all this, like I said, it was just finding yourself, finding what you like to do and expressing it. So the year has, you know, come and gone, uh, changes all around us. Uh, and it's been, you know, that's another good thing. You know, I ended up getting a chance to do a video with my mom for Mother's Day. That video will be up there forever. You know, that's the beauty of social media and YouTube is that whatever you put on there will always stay there for a long time. I was able to do a video with my son, you know, how to make a quesadilla. Again, I always have that. Videos with my girlfriend, uh, videos with kids, videos where you can see my dog, you know, Connor. Connor at this point is a year and a half years old. So, I mean, you get to see him from puppy to get older. I mean, it's beautiful the things you get to see and how to express yourself. So for anyone starting off, I would tell you straightforward, it's not easy. It takes a lot of dedication. It's gonna take uh, a lot of ups and downs. You're gonna scratch your head like, why did this get more views than this and et cetera. You're gonna do a lot of research. Uh, I've looked at every single thing, tips how to grow your subscribers, you know, uh, thumbnails are important, uh, content, descriptions, tags, everything. I've looked at every single thing and I can tell you it all works, but to a certain degree. When you're a small channel, it's hard to build and get the audience from bigger channels. I look at all my competition, I see what they're doing and how I can be better at what I do but it still doesn't give you the answers. So my only answer for everyone else out there starting off is just do it, have fun with it, keep it as a hobby. If it grows, awesome. If it doesn't, hey, you're gonna have all these memories to share for the rest of your life. So to everyone out there, especially Paul, I wanna say thank you for first, giving me the confidence to build the channel. Second, for always you know contacting me and letting me know how to improve and what to do. So love you. And for all my subscribers out there and for everyone who just clicks on my videos, thank you guys. You guys have helped me find who I am and uh, I will continue to keep on putting out content and hopefully grow. So, I mean, as anything else, love you guys. Uh, stay tuned until next week for another episode. This is just a special thank you to everyone out there. Love you. See you soon. Bye.